G'day, I'm Bill Flowers. Today we're going to be talking about tessellations, uh, where you just sort of tile things. I'm going to show you a very simple way of doing that, then a slightly more complicated way, but let's just keep it simple for this one. Okay, we start off drawing a square. Now, I cut the square out. I'm doing this on a just a spare sheet of paper. This is not going to be the final, but it's going to give you the idea on how to do a very simple tessellation. Make sure that's square. If it's not square, it won't all fit together. So I'm going to draw a snake. The tail's going to be there, and I'm going to make the body and the head come up here somewhere. This is all going to fit together. So I'm going to cut out the head and the tail part. I'm going to stick that on there. So the body, I've marked out the tail. It's exactly the same place as the negative space on the other side. So like I measure that just to make sure. So that head comes up there. It's exactly the same place. You measure with a ruler, you measure with a piece of paper. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now I have my template. And with this template, I can now draw onto, in this case, a thicker bit of cardboard. But if you're doing drawings, you can just keep drawing like so. You just keep adding it. So you can use that as something to trace and you can do all your drawings. But I'm going to show you one of the printmaking techniques called a color graph. Coloming in glue. So this is a print that you usually make up with glue and cardboard. It's going to give you an even better idea on how these tessellations work. So I have to cut this out very, very carefully. So without the confusion of the body drawing in, you can sort of see the tail. The tail that's cut out is moved over. The head that's cut out moved over on exactly the same height either side. So now I'm drawing in the body. Body doesn't really matter how you do that because it's inside the square. As long as it matches up with the tail and the head, everything should be fine. Color graphs are a really cool way of printmaking because it doesn't cost much. A bit of cardboard, a bit of PVA glue, and you have most of your plate to make a print with. And the way you print this, it can be printed either like a liner cut with a brayer or roller, or the way I'm going to do it, like an etching. It can also be printed in Talio. So using this PVA glue, when I ink it up, the ink's going to go in between the scales. And of course, when you get obsessed with drawing scales, things can take a long time. Once I've put that PVA glue down, I pop on some shellac. It's just shellac from the hardware store mixed up with a bit of methylated spirits. Now I'm doing what I call cut and peel. So I'm cutting around the snake and I'm just peeling away the cardboard. It gives a little bit of extra texture. And I give it another coat of shellac. I'm going to leave that overnight to dry. Next day I get some water and I put some paper in there. So this is called the intaglio technique. You need damp paper for this, always works best with damp paper. So with the intaglio technique, you push the ink into the grooves. Then you wipe the surface ink off. I usually use a bit of phone book to wipe the surface ink off. And it leaves behind the ink in the grooves. Now, of course the paper's wet, it's soft, and I've also got a blanket under the paper, as well as on top run it through the press, that dampened paper which is softened will press in and get all the ink transferred over to the paper. So that's the first one in red, now I'm going to do blue. I'm going to alternate it a little bit like a mini chessboard. It's kind of fun because every snake is exactly the same, sort of. The prints are never exactly the same. It's one of the things that interested people about the Andy Warhol prints, that all the Marilyns, they weren't exactly the same. They were the same, but they weren't. And that kind of describes snakes in a lot of ways. People just tend to think all snakes are the same, but they're not. Every snake has its own personality. Some are shy, some are not shy. Some will try and snap at you, 
others just don't care. I've got ones that are just curious all the time. When I do the pit shows, I've got one I call the boss, which goes and sits up on top of the painting I'm doing. I've got another one called Sneaky, who always goes and hides. They all have their own personality. And so you can see these ones aren't quite the same, but that's cool. I'll just keep repeating this process until I have a bit of a grid. But you can see how this tessellation is kind of working. They fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Now I'm doing this with printmaking, but you can also do it with drawing. Tricky bit of printing, but the end result is kind of interesting and each snake is slightly different. And now just a variation on this type of tessellation, which I shall explain right now. You sort of come in a little bit from the edge there and you draw in a shape like that and down here let's draw a shape like that. You cut those out and then you glue that that shape there over to here. That shape there gets glued over to here. That's how you do it. Huh. Better give you an example now. Maybe a shape like that. Got nothing planned. They're just shapes. So I'm not trying to make a snake or a lizard or anything else. All I'm doing is just knocking out a couple of shapes. So yeah, I definitely recommend that you measure that bit to make it right. There's one. There's my weird shape. So what I'm going to do here is trace it. There. What a weird shape. So next. That goes into there. So next one. So then this fits in here. Well, okay. that's how they should do it. Is it? Yeah, but then you've got to sort of think, okay, well, what's this going to be? Is this like a bird's head here? Is it going to have a wing here? Mm. You know, you've got to make something out of the weird abstract shape. But if you sort of got that up, sit that up on your wall and just lie in bed and look at it for a while, you probably would come up with all sorts of... That looks like a person running. Mm. Well, yeah. there you go, a mm. person running. I'm not sure how you get that. That, 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 that one. Uh, uh, yeah, like that. That way? No. It's disappeared. It's, it's, it's a magic measure. Yeah. It was. It was a person. It's here with the arm out. So did you start with an exact square? A square, yeah. So it goes direct. Your cutout shape goes directly opposite your cutout bit. Yeah. That's right. It's yeah. directly opposite there, and it goes directly opposite there. Yeah. So that was how to do like a grid tessellation. The next time I tackle this in the next video on this, I'm going to be doing um, rounded ones just to make things a bit more interesting. But until then, check out my latest video here. I'll see you next time. Bye.